if you have a simple problem, there should be a simple SQL solution. And if you have a complicated problem, then you might have a complex SQL solution. Like most programming languages, people find SQL easy when it obeys the, what I would call the common sense mantra. And that is, if you have a simple problem, there should be a simple SQL solution. And if you have a complicated problem, then you might have a complex SQL solution. Where people tend to get frustrated with things like SQL is when what seems to be a simple problem ends up with a complicated SQL solution. And a common one that traps novices often is when it comes to aggregation. When we're doing aggregation, one of the most common requirements is once we've aggregated on some particular column, we actually want to know information about another column. To look at some real life examples, it might be, let's say I'm looking at basketball and I might say, okay, across the season, what was the highest point scored in a game? And that's an easy aggregation query in SQL. But the moment you say something like, okay, and who scored that? Then it becomes more complicated. And these are common requirements, aggregate on something, but report something else about that aggregation. And that's where the keep clause comes in really, really useful. But first, let's explore how the problem occurs and how people struggle with it, looking at how we would normally do reporting on properties about an aggregation which don't directly involve the aggregated column. Let's explore this with an example of cities. I've got a table of cities, not all the cities in the world, but just a selection I grabbed it from Wikipedia. And for each city, I've got the country and I've got the population of that city. A simple query might be on a country by country basis, what is the highest population of any given city in that country? So I can just do select the country code, the max population, the count from the cities table. I'll group by country code. Just to keep the results small, I'll add a having by. So we're only interested in rows in this table where we've got multiple cities for a given country. I get 10 rows back. And of course, the logical next question is what city has that high population. And that's where things start to get a little bit complicated. If I just go ahead and throw in the city code as a requested column, then my SQL doesn't work anymore because as we know, whatever columns that are not aggregated have to be included in the group by. So I can't do that. If I'm new to SQL, I then think, okay, fair enough. You've given me the error code. You've given me some guidance as to how to fix it. I'll have the city in the select clause and I'll have the city in the group by clause. And whilst my query now works, I've changed the result and it's not really what I'm after. Once I add non-aggregated queries into the select clause, that defines the grouping of the aggregation. And of course, I'm no longer getting the information I actually want, namely the highest population of a given city in a particular country. In fact, if I remove the having clause, the moment I start grouping by city, because I have one row per city, I'm getting a count star of one for every single row. I've actually lost the entire aggregation and therefore the result is now useless to me. And here's where we start heading down that path of simple requirement, SQL starting to get more complicated. One way I could tackle this is with a subquery. I now start with the cities table and then for every single row, I'm gonna do a subquery to see if the population for this given row matches the maximum population for any country that the city maps to. That works, but now to add in that requirement of only those rows where the number of cities for a given country is greater than one, now I've got another subquery. I'm now joining into the cities table again using a subquery to satisfy the having count star greater than one element of my original query. If that seems to be getting too far away from the original query, then one way of tackling it once you have your working first query, which was population by country, is to embed that in a with clause. So I've got my original query there, and then I can go ahead and join back to the cities table, lining up the city that has that particular value of the population. So it can be done, but you can see the SQL is getting pretty complicated. Developers familiar with some of the more modern SQL features may choose to use an analytic function or a window function. In this case, I can use count star and the max, but using the over clauses to pick up information about aggregation, but still retain every single row from the cities table. I put that in an inline view, and then I can do the appropriate predicates to narrow down my result. All of which is fine, but we've fallen into this thing of, this is surely a simple requirement, and yet the SQL gets more and more complicated. I need more and more facilities, inline views, with clauses, analytic functions, etc. It seems to be very complicated. This is where the keep clause is awesome. I must admit, it's a bit cryptic to read, 
But if you can remember that mantra of it's effectively bringing along extra information along with an aggregate, then I think you'll find lots and lots of use cases for it. The way the syntax reads is this. I've got my country, my count star, my max population as well. I'm gonna now have a new aggregation. It's the max on the city, and we'll see in a second that max doesn't really matter. The magic here is inside the brackets. I'm doing dense rank first, so I want the first element of some sort of result here. And what defines first? What defines top or bottom? I order by population descending. So I go find the highest population, but rather than pick up the population value, I pick up the value that's inside the aggregate, in this case, the city. So instead of an aggregation normally being whatever's inside the aggregation column, the maximum salary, the maximum population, etc., in this case, I say what's inside the brackets, the keep dense rank first, that defines my high and low value, in this case, population. But when I find the high and low value of a population, I use the city, the column in the aggregation, that's the value that comes back. So we read that as it's the city for which the population is highest. Highest being dense rank first, order by population descending. And so that's the keep clause. Much, much easier, much simpler because you simply added an additional expression to your original query and it reflects what the requirement was. I have an aggregation by country, that's in the group by, and yet I want to pick up some information related to the aggregate but I don't want to perturb the aggregate by adding those columns in the select clause. So I think you'll find a massive number of use cases here for the keep clause. Yes, it's a bit cryptic to read, but once you get familiar with it, you'll find so many examples where rather than having inline views and with clauses and subqueries, you'll just add a simple keep expression and the job is done. Simple problem, simple SQL solution.